Hello and welcome to Conversations. I'm Jim Below, your host. Very pleased to have joining me today, Christopher Taylor, Mayor of Ann Arbor. Welcome to Conversations. My pleasure to be here. And uh, as mayor, you've, you're now about to enter your, what, fifth year? That's correct. Has, has it been what you, you could say, thought it had, was going to be? Uh, yeah, for the most part, yes, of course. Uh, I'd been on council for six years before uh, being elected mayor. Uh, and so I'd seen the mayor do all sorts of mayoral things. Uh, and so, you know, I, I felt like I had a decent idea yeah. of what the job would entail. And, and, it's, it's and a, a it's sense of how you could say council and the mayor interact and work with the administrator and other members of the city hall staff and, and all of that. Uh, how is it yeah. different being mayor now as opposed to the six years on council? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, there are a couple of different t you know, contexts in which it's different. Uh, within City Hall, uh, you know, you have to kind of be used to, uh, you know, get used to being the person at the head of the table. Having your own office. Yeah. Well, well, I do have an office. It's about as big as this table. I see. It's okay. not super big. Um, uh, but, you know, people, uh, people look to you for, uh, for leadership, people, uh, and that's, um, that's something different from a standard council member. Uh, also, there is the, uh, uh, the, the head of state component of the job, which I hadn't, uh, I mean, I understood it, of course, I knew that it existed, but that too takes a while. You do have a little bit more of a, uh, a community presence that you do as a council member. What types of things as mayor uh, do you do as sort of the head of state? Uh, what type of, uh, not only responsibilities, but you know, honorary things have you been able to, to sort of get involved with? Sure. Well, you go to, uh, I mean, you're, you're, you're invited to a good, a good deal many things. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, when there's a, an anniversary for a nonprofit, they'll typically, you know, invite the mayor to come uh, make a proclamation yeah. and do that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, I get to go to a lot of elementary schools uh, and, you know, talk to students, talk to students in elementary schools, middle schools, high schools. Uh, so those are, those are some of the head of state functions. Also, too, uh, you know, I've done a lot of weddings. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. I've, yes, I've uh, married about, um, you know, 280, 290 wow. couples so far. Okay. Yeah. And uh, as the mayor now, yeah. uh, working with council itself, do you get a sense that you really have any more influence as mayor than you did as a member of council and you're just one of 11 votes? Well, it, it kind of all depends. Uh, you know, it depends upon the issue. It depends upon the context. Uh, council members will vote how council members will vote, uh, ultimately. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we don't have a, uh, the kind of a system where there's patronage to be delivered. Or, right, you know, yeah. uh, you know, so it, there's no uh, top-down instructions that get provided. So uh, in that regard, it's as much influence as I thought, which is you know, merely the influence of, of personality and argument. And one of the things that's in certain ways unusual about Ann Arbor, at least now, is the, you could say, the division or... Uh, members of council and mayor aren't uh, politically or partisan votes for the most part. You don't have anyone who's identified as Republican on council. So the traditional Republican-Democrat sort of disagreement on issues. What, however, has emerged as the types of things that tend to separate people? Because so seldom is it, well, I actually wouldn't say seldom, but you don't read about the 11-0 votes. That's true. Uh, you know, we have partisan elections in Ann Arbor, and I think that's a, a very important and good thing. Yeah. Uh, the partisan label, I think, is an incredibly important indicator of right. a person's uh, political philosophy, their views of the role of government, their views uh, of uh, you know, diversity in the community, uh, you know, a wide variety of measures. And so I think that's very important. But as you indicated, it doesn't mean that we agree about everything. Uh, in Ann Arbor, we have uh, 11 members of council, myself included, 10 are, 10 are Democrats, one is independent. Uh, we have various fault lines. Uh, one of the, you know, the commonly observed fault line is with respect to, uh, you know, comfort about uh, change, a comfort about uh, development, uh, how we feel about, you know, density and the growth of our community, the future of our community. Uh, that, I guess, is one of the typical fault lines. Now, you, you mentioned the concept of development in, in one of the areas of development that has come up in, in sort of the, the public eye is the downtown. Mm -hmm. And when, when you and members of council think and talk about development in the downtown, what types of things are being considered or being looked at? Well, uh, you know, we don't live in a command economy. Uh, you know, the city council, you know, the mayor, the city council, the city administrator, we don't decide uh, what goes where. The market uh, decides what goes where. It's America. You, you purchase property. You build what you want to build uh, within the context of our zoning. I see, yeah. uh, and so in the downtown, we, uh, we have zoned for a wide variety of uses. A variety, you know, we zoned for commercial uses, retail, office space, uh, and of course residential. Uh, so downtown, there are a couple of projects 
which are you know, which you know, private property owners yep. have have brought to the planning commission and are going to be coming to city council soon. One uh, particularly interesting uh, project is uh, right behind uh, the Michigan right. Theater. Uh, that's one which will involve a good deal of uh, residential, uh, some affordable housing, as well as some retail. Uh, we'll provide the, the Michigan Theater with uh, with some additional and extra and uh, and much needed uh, you know bathroom space, uh, space yeah. and that sort of thing. So it's um uh, I guess that's one of the more noteworthy things that's happening in the downtown. You, you mentioned that and in looking at other things related to zoning, what control does a city have uh, in limiting or or denying a private developer from being able to build on their land? Is it just the zoning? In other words, if it meets the zoning guidelines of the city, then they can put up almost anything? Uh, if, uh, if you own land uh, and you propose a project that meets the, the zoning, uh, then it is our legal obligation to approve that project. Okay. Uh, there are some uh, conditions for health, safety, and welfare, which are very limited in their application. But uh, for the most part, uh, and really for all practical purposes, if the project that you propose meets the zoning, it's our legal obligation to approve. And if the council uh, denies that approval based on the criteria that you just gave, uh, it ultimately is then up to what? The courts to determine if the health, safety, and welfare of the community is being questioned by this development? Uh, that's if, the, if the developer wanted to. Sure. You know, okay. if, we, uh, if we deny a by right project, if we deny a project that complies with the zoning, uh, and we do so based upon an articulation of, uh, of health, safety, and welfare, then uh, if the developer, if the property owner, chooses to bring us to court on that action, they will review our assessment of health, safety, and welfare, review what we've said uh, on the floor about health, safety, and welfare, and the court will, would ultimately determine whether or not that met, uh, met scrutiny. Now, one thing the council in the city does have is a, a uh, sort of way of, of working with a development is what's planned, a planned unit development, a PUD. Yeah. Do many projects go through that discussion today? I know in 20 years ago or so, it seemed like there were more planned unit developments. Mm -hmm. uh, but is that still an alternative that's being used? Uh, yes, a PUD, a planned unit development, is certainly one of the tools of zoning that we have. Basically, that's an opportunity for a property owner to bring a project to the city that does not comply with existing zoning. It's a request for rezoning in exchange for uh, articulated public benefit. The property owner says these are the following public benefits. The city weighs that, uh, the council yeah. weighs that, planning commission, staff weighs that. And if we conclude that it is a public benefit uh, and the votes are there, then the project mm -hmm. is approved. And one of the things that in the past plan unit developments have, have come to council for is, is height and the number of floors in certain areas of both downtown and the city where they're limited in the how how tall a building can be and that's mm -hmm. one of the issues that has come up in the last couple of years uh, what kind of trade-off does a developer offer to allow you know a taller project or a uh, different type of uh, use of the land sure uh, you know it's a wide variety it, it really all depends and it's very site specific uh, speaking of the uh, the project that uh, is behind the Michigan Theater, uh, that's not a planned unit development, that's what's called a planned project, okay. which provides for uh, a, essentially a, a modest and small deviation from existing yeah. zoning. Uh, and so they are, I think, offering 19 units to be uh, affordable, uh, permanently affordable, uh, or administered by the county, uh, housed by, by the project, uh, in exchange for, if I recollect correctly, uh, 15 extra feet. You mentioned the, uh, the housing issue, and that has been an issue in the downtown and throughout the city as far as affordability. Um, what limits the affordability of housing in Ann Arbor from your uh, perspective? It's a couple of, uh, fundamentally, it's the market. Uh, okay. you know, supply and demand is not a joke, uh, and we for decades have you know, actively and, and in, with intentionality limited the supply of housing in Ann Arbor. Right. Uh, Ann Arbor is an attractive place to work and it's an attractive place to live. Uh, and so as a consequence, prices have gone up, right. which is awesome for those of us who were in on the ground floor, uh, yeah. but less awesome for people who work in Ann Arbor and want to live in Ann Arbor. Uh, and uh, you know, it has, uh, well, I, let me pull this back. I said it's awesome for us. Um, I really meant that only with respect to, uh, you know, somewhat you know, tongue in cheek with respect to property values. Right. But there are real harms 
for residents of Ann Arbor as a result of the lack of affordable housing uh, for others. Mm -hmm. Fundamentally, uh, you know, we live in an uh, economically stratified community. Uh, by extension, that means we also live in an increasingly racially stratified, racially segregated community, uh, which is entirely inconsistent with our values and our aspirations. And just recently, uh, within the last few days, I, I read an article that talked about what, three of the top 10 uh, zip codes in the state of Michigan as far as rental mm -hmm. uh, property and you know the cost of leasing an apartment, let's say, that three of the zip codes in the top 10 are from Ann Arbor. So it's not just the housing that has limited, or single family housing that's limited affordability, but also the rental and that's, you know, not just the university that is, you know, sort of impacting that. Oh, absolutely. You know, what we need in Ann Arbor, uh, I mean, we have, you know, the students are here. We love them. We want them to live in, in, in safe and clean places. Uh, but we really want people who work in Ann Arbor to be able to live in Ann Arbor. Yeah. Uh, and that's, you know, that's, you know, every, you know, that involves, you know, people that work in offices, people who work in retail, we, people who work in service, in service provision. Uh, and we just don't have the housing stock for them. We don't have multifamily units. If, in which the, uh, for, yeah. with, for them to live in. And what we need to do is make sure that where we have the opportunity, we expand development, uh, we expand density, we expand housing to provide those opportunities. Well, we're going to take a short break, come back and look at other issues facing right. Ann Arbor and your goals as the mayor. Ask your viewers to stay with us. We'll be back in just a moment. CTN Sports, bringing local sports to you. Conversations. I'm speaking today with Chris Taylor, the mayor for the city of Ann Arbor. And before the break, we were talking about some of the concerns about affordable housing. Yes. What can the city do to encourage, as you say, it's predominantly a supply and demand, but what can the city do to make the supply of affordable housing more desirable for a developer to build? Yeah. Well, we, uh, we have some tools, but we're also uh, fundamentally limited. Uh, in the state of Michigan, we are not allowed, the city is not allowed uh, to you know, provide what's called inclus inclusionary zoning. We are not allowed to obligate developers to have a certain proportion 
of their units, of their development, be affordable. So that's off the table. Yeah. Uh, what we can do is we can increase the, uh, increase the opportunity for density, increase the ability of uh, property owners to build in areas where, they would, uh, where the market would naturally have those properties be you know, less expensive. So one proposal that we have coming forward is uh, transit-oriented development, new transportation corridor districts, yeah. which would enable uh, property owners who have property along State Street, along Eisenhower, along Stadium, uh, those sorts of uh, locations, to build uh, mixed unit developments, uh, commercial on the bottom, uh, residential on top, which would have uh, the ability of you know, expanding the supply in areas where prices are going to generally be lower than elsewhere, but also, and very importantly, uh, having all that occur on transportation corridors, because it's very important that we right. do what we, you know, one of the, the, the balances the that we have here. Affordability, allowing people to have jobs and to be able to get to that's exactly both right. jobs and to markets, to appointments, whatever it might be. It's very important that people uh, be able to, you know, get around without a car, get around with mass transit. Mm -hmm. uh, in some instances, we would want uh, people to be able to, you know, walk to local stores uh, along transit corridors. Uh, but also we want them to be able to come downtown through uh, AAATA. And they do a great job of getting people in from the outside to mm -hmm. the, uh, the downtown core. Uh, we want to make sure uh, that there is uh, you know, as much development as reasonably possible uh, on those corridors to get folks in and out of the downtown. The city owns some property, especially in the downtown, which would be considered very valuable. Yes. Uh, and you mentioned that you cannot have inclusionary zoning, but do you have any ability to limit or control, you might say, who you sell land to or make available for land to be used in which affordable housing could be a component? That's, that's a great question, and the answer is absolutely. Where the city owns the land, uh, where the schools own the land, where the University of Michigan owns the land, we are able to uh, obligate any builder on that property you know, to build, to the, build, want, build the building we want. Uh, now, uh, you know, we, there are still market constraints. Uh, we can't say, there shall be a 20-story yeah. building here that's all affordable, uh, because you know, no developer would be yeah. able to, to finance such a structure. But, uh, what we can do is we can make we can uh, articulate our, our goals. That is to say, uh, you know, with respect to the Y lot, by way of yeah. example, uh, we're going to, in all likelihood, hear from uh, from staff about their analysis of how the Y lot could be, uh, you know, best developed. Uh, I expect you'll see a proposal for uh, downtown uh, retail on the bottom, uh, maybe some office somewhere, but I think importantly, uh, a lot of uh, affordable housing up top. There will be some market rate housing mixed in. Uh, because to balance things. To, well, to, to balance things, that's right. It's very important that uh, that those um, those uh, parcels themselves have uh, have mixed incomes because that's uh, that's a better uh, a better mix. That you know, it's it's salutary for everyone, uh, but also uh, for the economics of the thing, uh, it's useful to have uh, have that sort of mixed usage. You mentioned briefly the the whole idea of the transportation that and has the city looked at or or done as much as you would like in, in helping provide, whether it be mass transit or working with the communities outside the city, because transportation is one thing that doesn't end at a boundary. Right. Um, and so, you know, in working with House, Southeast Michigan, or even just with the AAATA, on making more, of, uh, not just affordable, but ability for people to get in and around Ann Arbor. Uh, you know, I'm satisfied with the work that AAATA does. Uh, you know, I think we all uh, we all want more, right. um, you know. In AAA TA, if they if they had the the zeros and behind it, and with all the new uh, they'd be construction in the downtown, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Oh, you know, you, well, you can't fix the roads without fixing yes. the roads. <laughs> uh, so you know, I think that AAA that they do great work, and, and they work with local, with uh, neighboring jurisdictions that want to work with yeah. them in order to provide that service, and I, I fully support that. Uh, one thing that you know disappointed me back in 2016 was the failure of the regional transit authority millage. Uh, the Regional Transit Authority Millage would have provided support for uh, uh, a train uh, service uh, on the east-west corridor, uh, which would have, uh, you know, which yeah. when ultimately and, and God willing implemented, yeah. uh, you know, take thousands of people off the, off the roads, off of Ann Arbor roads, and bring them into uh, Ann Arbor and, uh, and out and right. to points east by train, right. which would be, uh, you know, great for congestion, great for the economy of the area, and of course, uh, great for the environment and quality of life. In looking at that, and, and it failed in, in 2016, but there, is there still talk of bringing some type of a, uh, uh, a vote back? Uh, things have changed politically, let's say, in uh, areas of Southeast Michigan, and some believe it would be 
easier to get a passage of a, whether it be a bond issue or whatever, to provide mm -hmm. transportation throughout southeast Michigan? Uh, I don't know the, uh, the, the full state of play right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's my hope that, uh, that we'll take advantage of uh, the opportunity that the 2020 election brings to us. Uh, and that there will be a millage on the ballot if the uh, if the RTA right. thinks it's, uh, it it has a, has a shot, right. and that the voters say yes. Right. Ultimately, then tied in with the transportation issue, and you mentioned you know getting cars off the the roads, um, the green effort of Ann Arbor in in working in uh, developing and making uh, the environment a, a cleaner mm -hmm. area. What types of things has the Ann Arbor done, and what would you like to see done in the greening of Ann Arbor? Uh, well, uh, the uh, you know, sustainability is a very important uh, you know, core value of the community. Uh, you know, we, uh, we have a climate crisis, and while we're not going to solve the problem uh, conclusively in Ann Arbor, uh, we can serve Fair as, uh, we, yeah. Can, yeah, we, can do our, we can do our part, uh, and it's crucial that we do so. Yeah. Uh, and so one of the things that we're going to be doing is we're working uh, with uh, Pittsfield Township, and we're working okay. with DTE. Uh, in an effort to put a you know 20 plus uh, megawatt uh, solar array on the uh, the Ann Arbor landfill, which is sited in Pittsfield Township, right. uh, if we're able to get off that off the ground and and if the uh, the grid can technologically handle it, I believe you know we have a good shot of doing so. Uh, that would be a very important step forward. But you know that's uh, that's really not enough. We need to do more. Now you you mentioned putting on solar panels there, for a city uh, providing solar energy. How does that benefit the residents? You know, I don't understand how it operates. I mean, would the, would the electricity be in a sense stored and then sold to the city, or would it be possible for residents of the city to, to you know, you could say buy into it? Uh, it's not a community solar site. Okay. So uh, what essentially it would be doing is uh, uh, providing the, the uh, well, also electricity is fungible. So we would be providing uh, electricity for use on site at the, uh, uh, for use on site and also providing uh, electricity to the grid, uh, which would offset uh, all other uh, municipal uses. We'd also, because it's in Pittsfield Township, I believe, uh, well, I know it's in Pittsfield yeah. Township, I believe we would uh, include some of the, yeah. uh, the, the, off, uh, the uh, electricity to offset uh, Pittsfield Township's municipal usage. And this is, would not be, you could say, the first time the city's entered into some uh, effort at, at, you could say, uh, creating energy. I mean, you've got, is Barton Dam still operational as far as the uh, creation of electricity as a result of the, the water flowing through the we, dam? We do have some hydroelectric right. on the Huron River. Uh, it is, uh, it, it's present, it's not, a, uh, it's not a major factor. The reason I ask you is I know in the mid 80s there was a vote and there was always question about, you know, to, yes it looks and sounds good, but is it going to be financially, you say, mm -hmm. beneficial? And so the cost of putting in solar panels you know, there's a cost involved, and at what extent do you justify it by uh, making money, so to speak, or do you justify it by saying it's good for the environment? Well, there's no question that it's good for the environment, and yeah. over the long term, it, it, it will be a good, uh, you know, make economic sense as well. We've right. got another a number of other projects, too, uh, just, you know, in a, in, in a week or two, later this month in October, uh, there'll be a big volunteer effort to install solar panels on Station 6, Fire Station okay. 6. Yep. Uh, and now, which station is that? That's the one by Briarwood. Okay. Uh, and so what we're going to be doing there is uh, we've uh, purchased the, the panels. We're going to have volunteers help uh, help uh, you know with the installation. Yeah. Of course, the uh, everything involving wires and the like yeah. will be done by uh, by licensed workers, licensed electricians, and so forth. Uh, but we'll be going to using volunteers to to leverage that effort. Uh, and if it works as we really expect that it will. Uh, it's my hope that over the next year and change, uh, we'll be able to install a lot more panels and a lot more city buildings using that combination of volunteer and professional uh, tradesmen effort. Now, as, as mayor for the past five years, what's been the most unusual request you've gotten from a citizen? Uh, they're all perfectly <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, an unusual request. You know, people come to, uh, come to the mayor for all sorts of different things. Yeah. They have all sorts of different concerns. Um, you know, uh, yes, I had a gentleman talk to me for quite some time about raw milk at one point. Okay. Uh, which is, you know, outside yeah. the purview of the city. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I guess, you know, it's the understanding yeah. of both the division of, of uh, importance and the division of authority that the city has compared to a state issue oh, sure. or a national issue. And I'm guessing you still have people who will come in and question or express their concerns about something going on at the national level. Uh, or the international level. You yes. know, there we have people that uh, want us to say all sorts of different things about all sorts of different uh, events going on all around the world. 
Right. Uh, in the end, you know, we, uh, uh, you know, local governments is, is, is an right. interesting thing. We are, in some respects, the, the least powerful uh, within, our, within our governmental system, but we're also the most intimate. We're the, right. we're the most accessible form of government. Uh, and there's a tension there, but I think there's also opportunity uh, because we have the opportunity to provide service, uh, but also to explain uh, and work with residents to you know, build, their, uh, build their community in the way that meets their aspirations. What's been the most frustrating thing as mayor? Uh, you know, it's frustrating when, uh, when, 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 you, when you, you want to do things and they don't, uh, and right. they don't work out. Uh, now, is that yeah. due to just the, whether it be the market or the environment at the time? To what extent is it working with other members of council? Because that's, to be honest, one of the issues that seems to be coming up at times sure. is disagreements or, uh, yeah, disagreements with members of council and, and who's got the votes now. Uh, well, well, certainly, you know, there are votes that you want to go one way that don't go one way yeah. or the other. You know, for, for my part on a, you know, on a pure policy level, yeah. uh, you know, I think the Proposal A uh, passage was uh, a strategic and long-term error. Uh, and that was the use of the land above the uh, parking structure next to the yeah. library. That's right. Yeah. You know, we had a uh, building under contract. There were going to be 43 units of permanent workforce housing there. $5 million going to the Affordable Housing Fund. Another $5 million going to go to pay off the Y-Lot. Uh, a debt on the wild lot, which we still carry. Right. Uh, about six hundred thousand dollars a year coming to the city. Uh, there would be a, a lot of benefits from your perspective. Absolutely, and I think it's a uh, you know it's a long-term strategic error, and it's going to doom that section. Where to do you think the state stand right now with that property? Uh, right now, there's going to be there is a uh, a task force uh, okay. by the resident by some residents appointed by the city, uh, looking to see uh, what uh, what we should do with it. Right. Well, any any. Uh, immediate goals you have as we wind down uh you know what you want to see accomplished before the end of the year uh well before the end of the year uh you know we're going to uh you know basically just continue what we're going to do we're, we have a uh, uh, we have uh, this year's a particularly exciting one because we have new affordable housing money new uh climate action money new pedestrian safety money right. based upon a, a county village yep. exactly and so uh this is really the first year that we're able to take uh, real and concerted action in those regards. Uh, the climate action uh, in particular, I think, yeah. is something that uh, resonates with people and that we're going to be able to take uh, meaningful steps forward. Well, I want to thank you for joining us this afternoon. And it's uh, always an honor to be able to speak with the elected officials. I want to thank you for your, your service and the residents, while maybe not always making it sound like it, do appreciate, I think, you and council and everyone involved in the, the running of the city. Well, thank you. You know, you, as mayor, you get a you get blamed for some things that aren't your fault, but you get credit for things that aren't your doing. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, in, in Ann Arbor, that credit blame balance is all right. Great. I want to thank our viewers for joining us today and look forward to your continued support here on Conversations. Thank you.